You've tuned into the Belly Up Podcast for the week of November 18. Happy Thanksgiving 2018. This is a new season. It's episode 101. From that city still by the Salish Sea, I am AJ Barce. And giving thanks always for what I've been blessed with. I'm Chris Powell. On this episode, AJ and I got a new click over into the triple digits of our episodes. We're going to have a conversation. Uh, no fancy hook. Let's just get this party started. This is the Bellingham Podcast. Well, happy early Thanksgiving, sir. Right back at you with a bowl full of stuffing. <laughs> How are you doing, Chris? I'm doing fine, thank you. Still coming off the the euphoria that was episode 100 and an opportunity yeah. to have a conversation with Bellingham's mayor, Kelly Linville. Thank you once again uh, for taking the time to be with us, Mayor Kelly. We definitely ha- uh, had a great time and appreciate your insights into yeah. life and uh, running this darn city. <laughs> that was really cool. Totally. Thank you, Mayor Kelly. Uh, well, let's get into it. So for episode 101, Chris and I wanted to kind of hit the reset button, or as Chris says, we're, we're clicking over a new a new number. ka And uh, watching the date roll on your, on your watch as it were. Yes. And uh, we just want to kind of come back to our roots. We're going to talk, this is a gear-centric episode. Uh, we're going to tra- talk a little bit about travel, gear, uh, watches, a little bit of everything. Uh, yeah, it's just going to be a little bit refreshing. So uh, just for a little bit of housekeeping, if I sound a little bit nasally, uh, do not adjust your podcast station. I have a head cold, courtesy of my wife. So there might be also some weird edits in this because I'm going to edit out any cough, which is probably going to happen every five minutes. So. There you go. And uh, normally we record about three feet away from each other. But now due to AJ's germs, I'm now eight feet away from him because I don't want to get no holiday cold. So, yeah, uh, here's some Purell for you. Chris, and Thank let, you. let's get into this. So uh, earlier earlier this week, we did a little bit of traveling. We did a little bit of a road trip up north, uh, north of the border, at least from the United States. We visited Canada and the Lower Mainland. Hello, Canada. Uh, we had amazingly, it, it seems like there were, it was providential that we were able to make this trip because the border oh, crossing. Dude. Nailed it. Both ways. Nailed it. If you're from... Washington State or Canada for that matter, and you happen to use the border uh, Peace Arch, Truck Crossing, Linden, Sumas. At 5 o'clock. At 5, <laughs> 5 p.m., ladies and gentlemen, on a Tuesday <laughs> night. Was it Tuesday? Yeah. Tuesday. Um, pretty much you'd have to pack a lunch and definitely have an empty bladder. However, AJ and I... You, we, you you have we, good mojo. Well, we 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 took my advice that I'd mentioned. I don't know how many episodes ago, where I always like hitting the Linden border because yes. it's, it's not a twenty four hour border. But if you hit it at the right times, usually you can coast through. And you saw how easy you could coast through. Oh yeah, and that Linden border is like you take Guide Meridian in Bellingham North yeah. and figure out it, it. Keep going, keep going, keep going, and you eventually end up at that border crossing. We made it through no problem and then hit Highway 1 yeah. to get to the world-class megalopolis that is Vancouver. YVR, if you're playing Sub airport YVR. codes. And we had a bit of we, – we, we were able to join a party. Yes. So they're in the Watch Fam, which I'm, I'm going to say, hey, Watch Fam. Konnichiwa, Watch Fam. So in the Watch Fam, there is this uh, growing group of people called Red Bar. It came from a, uh, a group over on the East Coast where the founders used to meet up at this place called the Red Bar. And it was just a bunch of watch folk. And it was about talking and and and, and bringing watches, showcasing watches and, and seeing horology uh, collecting at its finest well they've expanded 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 now there's different chapters in in major metropolitan cities uh there's uh, i believe there's one in seattle but i have an affinity for vancouver obviously i I participate in the the dgr every year in in vancouver and stuff and i I really wanted to for a first meet and greet for red bar i wanted to do it in, in 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 vancouver so i reached out to the the chapter president i don't I don't facilitator. Know what it, facilitator. Par excellence. Hey, Ryan. Yo, um, Ryan. And um, a couple months back and said, hey, you know, I'd, I'd love to, you know, catch you guys one time. And so anyway, uh, he got back to me and um, got an invite. And so we went up to an undisclosed location because one of the, the first rules of Red Bar Crew is... You, you don't talk about where you're meeting. <laughs> yes. Uh, Nor do you GPS locate yes. your p- pictures that you're taking for social media. Right. It's just... it's it, So there's a lot of courtesies, which is cool Absolutely. because at these meetings, uh, you have ladies and gentlemen bringing fine 
watches from collections that otherwise wouldn't see the light of day. Like, for instance, we saw uh, several Rolexes from original vintages. From um, There was a killer GMT master. There was uh, Elanga and Sona, which just was the mic drop of the evening. And all of the, these collectors just bring them to this group so that uh, you, they can share, one, their passion, two, their, the story of these watches, and three, you know, you otherwise wouldn't be able to get your your hands on them as, as just a j- everyday average Joe who loves horology. So anyway, I wanted to say thanks to the Red Bar crew, uh, Ryan, and also a few others that we met that night. Absolutely. And so, you know, when AJ and I entered this uh, location uh, and we had never met any of these folks in person. And I got to say from a, a from a newbie standpoint, uh, I was really impressed uh, with the uh, inclusiveness the welcoming uh, vibe that they gave us. Hey, you know, welcome. Glad you're here, et cetera, et cetera. And I want to give a special shout out to uh, Dan, the man, uh, <laughs> who is is the sage oracle of of watching all. I, I when I'm with people that know a lot of information. I shut up and listen. <laughs> Life pro tip, y'all. And I had a chance to uh, listen to some of Dan's stories as far as uh, his timepieces because I they're not just watches. Yeah, these bad boys that he had in, in, in along brought along with were. OMG. You know that you know the cartoons back in the 50s mm-hmm. and such where the dog or someone would have they look at something and then their chin would drop to the ground. Bong. Bong. Yeah. I had that yeah. as I'm looking at these watches uh and these timepieces. So big thanks to uh, Dan the man as I affectionately refer to. Uh also Phil and Greg uh, and Brian who was uh, able to help facilitate the venue. But anyway, a uh, big props uh to that and a couple others. Yeah, uh, also hey Sherlock. Uh I just want to say hey to you and also Sean. I caught him right as we were leaving. I, 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 I'm glad that you kind of saw the, the inclusive nature of this group. And, yep. and what's cool is like, because you looked at me and you're like, dude, can this SKX like hang with, like, I've seen pictures of Red Bar, like, and I'm, like I was telling you, Chris, like, it's not about the price of the watch, but the passion behind it or the story behind it. Mm-hmm. And like yours is, you know, this one lightly has a story. modded. Yeah. yeah. And by you. Well, and they were well, and the watch fam that yeah. was at Red Bar YBR mm-hmm. um, was able to take a little bit of interest. And so I felt welcomed. And also knowing that I don't know Jack about movements and the n- numbers of the movies, which is great. They were able to be very patient and explain yeah. that stuff to me. And I was really appreciative, especially when yeah, uh, the watch. Pi- uh, yes, the the big pile of watches. Uh, wow. <laughs> but yeah, no, like um, I was I was chatting with Sean on my way out, and really cool guy, and had a really cool story about about a, a Rolex Explorer that he had, and or uh, sorry, a GMT Master. And anyway, I was telling him about the story of the, the watch that I built and stuff, which was kind of the the talking piece that I wanted to bring to the table that night. Because I only brought two watches. I brought my PNW zero zero one and an old USSR, so Soviet era pole jot. And the story behind that watch is just it's it's an interesting watch because it has a mechanical alarm, you know, Fitbits wake mm-hmm. you up in the morning. Well, yeah. here's Fitbit 1.0. Right. And meanwhile, that night, you know, we're seeing things like old GMT Masters and we're seeing, you know, uh, there was a Saxonia there. There was uh, several different eras of watches. Just amazing. And if you talk to any of these guys. All of them have a story behind everything, whether it was the long and um, or if it was the 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 uh, there was a triple calendar there. There was uh, a guy who got a military watch. It was I think it was an old Hoyer chronograph uh, pre tag era, and it was military issue. And he sought after that specific one because the starting serial number, the first two letters were his initials, and he didn't get one until that one came up. And that's what's really cool about this is, um, you know, the item itself is remarkable because it's a, a masterpiece like the the Long Ansona where you look at the back of that. And I gave you a loop because mm-hmm. I was like, Chris, yep. you need to see the, this thing move. I saw angels as I looked through the loop. That timepiece, the, the movement was yeah. uh, very uh, it, it outstanding. Is, it's is bonkers. Bonkers, outstanding. It doesn't do it justice yeah. for that. I had a, a much appreciation and much respect for what I was able to view through your loop. Yeah. So the the piece I'm talking about, if you want to do a Google search, is, is called an A. Longa Zona uh, Datagraph. And I, I mean, I've seen pictures of this thing. And, and thank you so much to the person who brought that in mm-hmm. because I've always wanted to see that the back of that thing. And to see the the hand finishing that is on those bridges, to see those gears mesh, 
it blew my mind. Like I've 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 cracked open enough watches, whether they're Russian, Swiss, or Japanese, but I've never seen anything to that degree. And my mind was just totally blown. Yeah, it was cool. It was a great time. And uh, once again, thank you for Red Bar YVR for uh, allowing us to join in the fun and uh, yeah, to make some new connections. That's always a cool thing. Yeah, and speaking of connections, you might be connecting to us on KMRE one hundred two point three FM, low power community radio here in the heart of the city. Of the subdued excitement, Bellingham, Washington, That's United right. States. That's right. All right. So, so let's talk gear. So gear. So it's been a while, Chris, since we've actually talked about what we have. Because we, we talked, I don't know, tens of episodes ago that we were both doing purges. We were embracing minimalism and stripping things down. And uh, I mean, I was even purging watches and, and I was purging camera gear. I wanted to kind of recap that and be like, okay, so Chris, what's, what's what'd still we standing? keep? What yeah. we keep? What we get? Exactly. So um, I, you know, I'm a, constantly in a state of wanting to uh, live a better life with less, and I've really done a lot of work over the hundred episodes that we've had and uh, the years as you know I've accumulated stuff either for important reasons or not important reasons. So uh, I'm kind of dividing what I currently. Uh, roll with is part of my everyday carry. We have one of our seven subcategories of the Belling Out podcast. One of them is EDC. We already talked about watches. We're going to talk about technology, but this is my everyday carry. Uh, it's divided in analog and digital life, what I bring with me. Um, the To house it all, uh, my transport uh, bag of choice at this point, uh, at least for two, 2019, because I can see this continuing on uh, due to the investment and the durability and the really killer... Uh, Build design, a Gorek GR1 backpack, uh, the 26 liter. If you're playing at home, it's it's just enough so that uh, it doesn't look like a satchel on my back because I am a fairly tall individual. But it's enough that I can store what I bring with me comfortably. And so uh, within that, I've got the as far as the analog life, Cargo Works, uh, based in Brooklyn, New York. They make some really cool. Cases, holders, whatever have you. I have a utility folder that I'm able to store a Baron Fig Mastermind Mini Dot Grid Notepad. That's a five by eight, uh, just for writing down the the notes that come in my mind to uh, jot stuff down. But I'm also we've talked about pens in the past. Yes, and, you and are my pen aficionado. I I'm a pen aficionado, but here's the thing: I'm going to throw you for a curve. Uh, all of these uh, pens, I'm in the process of selling. All the tornadoes? And all uh, the stuff, because I'm realizing I'm not using them right now, and I want them to go to someone who would appreciate it. And so it's not like I'm trying to make a buck out of it. In fact, I'm selling them at a discount. But, you know, live and learn. Uh, I've really identified with the Uniball Signo point, 0.38 uh, pens, rollerballs. And I've found that 0.38 is the right kind of small uh, for me to be able to, you know, for my penmanship. And for the record, you're also a lefty. I am a lefty, and so therefore the Signo uh, from Uniball does not smear as I'm writing, which is a big plus for left-handers uh, out there. Uh, so I have that inside my utility folder, and if, in case I have some uh, miscellaneous printed-out documents that I want to bring with me, shove it in there. It's it's a nice little weatherproof uh, black, uh, heavy, heavy, <laughs> heavy Cordura uh, uh, material uh, case. Still rocking the SKX 007, uh, SKX 007 modded by my podcast partner in crime uh, with Toxic NATO straps. Hello, Terry. Love your straps. They are uh, the goods, and I only <laughs> have two that I'm wearing right now. And so they're both uh, shiznits, aren't they? Uh, w- one is one the is black, shiznit, and then one is that Royal Admiralty. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, gray. yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm very lusty after that one. Ah, uh, well, you you're welcome to take a look at it and put it on your wrist, but you can't have it. Eh. It's mine. Uh, I also have a Columbia Slim wallet. I've been using this for a few years now, and I've been looking around for other minimalist wallets. Just can't find it because this one yeah. just seems to have just what I need. And uh, I have my keys, the key fob to my vehicle, but I also have like a really cool thing that I've been rolling with for the past season on Amazon. If you were to search for titanium pickpocket alpha, Hmm. this thing is a a little bit of a, it's a bottle opener. Yay. But it also is a little bit of a clip that goes over the pocket of your pants. Hmm. So you don't have the jingle jangle of the keychains or whatever keys you might have. Kind of like a flat carabiner? Very close to that, yes. And so um, I'm going to uh, wear it out because, AJ, you probably have a better visual description. But, so, uh, I got it. Okay. So basically it's attached to the key ch- your keychain and then it hooks over the, the top kind of like – yeah, it's kind of like a, like a carabiner but 
for the the actual um, pocket as opposed to like yep. some guys you clip it to the the belt loop. Yes. So yeah, that's that's it's super light. Is this this is titanium? That be titanium, dude. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Anyway, I really enjoy that. So that's my analog life that I've been enjoying. And in digital, I've really pared things down. I got my iPad Pro 12.9 with the gull wing crack by the power button. That you had after like – you had that thing for like only three weeks. I yeah, think. yeah. But it's mine now, and I'm pretty much not getting rid of it. Even in, flying in the face of all these new amazing OMG uh, – hardware specs for the new iPads, uh, I'm not buying one. This is what I'm rolling with. Got my iPhone 6S Plus that I'm still rolling with. I want to eke out another year of use from the 6S Plus uh, in a Magpul, M-A-G-P-U-L. They make tactical mm. um, uh, ammunition cases and other things, but this is a field case, which is a burly as heck iPhone 6S Plus case. Funny thing about not having the newest, latest, and greatest uh, devices the accessories are cheap, <laughs> are very affordable. That's right. And so I'm able to pick that one up for like 16 bucks. But oh, it protects wonderfully. Yeah. Uh, I I threw down on an Oki, A U K E Y. Aoki. Aoki, thank you very much. 20,000 milliamp hour portable charger. This thing is about as big as my hand. It's like yeah. bigger than the, the, the large phones that we are uh, wearing. Three USB ports. I can charge my iPad Pro, my phone, and and my AirPod uh, speaker uh, e- earphones all in one shot, which is pretty cool. I have the smaller version of it. Yes, and uh, so I got my AirPods, which is uh, I found to be ubiquitous because I love having those uh, synchronized with my phone via Bluetooth. I got a Western Digital 256 external solid state drive. Uh, that must have been pricey. Uh, no, not really. It was about ba- well pricey. It depends on uh, your budget, yeah. Things, uh, you know, situation. But 256 gigs. I need something to have quick transfers from various computers. And, Shockproof, weatherproof. Uh, well, it's a solid state drive, yeah. so there's no moving parts. It's, right, right. I mean, it's all digital. It's about maybe 80, uh, 80, 90 bucks or so that I found That's not on bad. deal. Yeah. And then I got the the monster four terabyte external USB drive. Got it. Even though I have tons of other redundant four terabyte drives in the yeah. ar- in the in the Powell family archives, uh, I have this one as my daily driver to be able to have uh, a bunch of stuff. So not a lot of things, but the things I have, I've done a lot of research and I pared it down to something that really works for me. That's cool. AJ Barsay, please tell me what the heck are you rolling with nowadays? Uh, so I have a little bit different tact. Um, I did get a new bag. Uh, I know that's a big shock because we talk about bags fairly often. Um, I've been on the record several times I, because of previous careers when I, I had to carry a lot of camera gear with me. I really had a loathing towards camera backpacks um, just because I was loaded down with a lot of kit and had to go to a lot of remote places. Uh, Now that I've been in mirrorless for several years, like I kind of revisit it because hashtag I'm a dad. And so I don't carry a lot of camera kit with me, but I carry a lot of kid kit with me along with my camera kit. And there was this one day, I kid you not, Chris, we were at a zoo and my wife gave me the the diaper, the token diaper bag, which is black. Um, My wife, my my wife did a very good job to make sure to get something that was very unisexual. Um, uh, with regards to that, so I have my normal sling bag. It was it's a uh, Case Logic um, reflection, I think is what the the model is. Um, ba- the same bag I brought to, uh, to the Red Bar Crew. Mm-hmm. Um, slung over my uh, shoulder one way. I had the diaper bag slung on the other, and I looked like I had I was like a dad bandolero. Like I had Rambo dad. Yeah, Rambo dad. Right. I've got like I've got kids toys in one hand, and I got my camera kit in the other. I'm your worst nightmare. And then I had uh, my son on my shoulders. Man, I felt like a pack mule again. And I was like, this can't, this can't go. Um, and so anyway, I, I started culling through and looking at different bags. And um, I've been through a lot of the brands. I, uh, Case Logic, I think you guys are the goods. Um, I've had a Timba. I still have a Timba. It's what I podcast out of. Uh, Peak Design, you know. And the thing about them is I really wanted a bag that was very um, travel-centric, very minimal, fast light and um but would have enough room to pack my kit as well as my kids kit and i narrowed it down to uh pack safe so pack safe you've probably seen this company before they their logo is basically like a turtle with like a lock as a logo and predominantly if you go to any travel section of any any store usually you'll see like pack safe uh like the rfid holders and the things around your neck if you're traveling abroad well they um they make a uh, bag that's been discontinued uh, at the time of this recording called cam safe and what it is is it it's a slash proof and uh or slash resistant weather resistant 
um, travel centric backpack for photographers where you have an easy hatch on the uh, left hand side so you can sling it over one shoulder, get your uh, kit side load style. You have a, uh, a berth up on top so you can put, in my case, my kids stuff up on top and it's separated from my camera kit down below. Um, but what's really cool is, is that, um, if you've ever been to any pickpocket central, um, all of the zippers have locks built into the bag. So somebody can't just reach up and unzip and grab, um, the bottom and sides. If somebody tries to do a slash and grab where they cut the bottom of your bag, dump all your stuff, grab your stuff and run. Um, it has a mesh through the entire back. So even if they did slash, you're slashing through like, uh, aircraft cade cable. Hello. Good luck. Then also, and something else that's really cool about this bag is the shoulder straps have like aircraft grade cabling through it. So if somebody tries to cut with like a, a big pair of scissors to grab, rip the backpack off of you, they cut cable and you're, you're, it's still strapped to you. And then hopefully you can like, you know, Chris Powell, the person, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Am I now a Well, verb? you're bigger than me. Like, you know. That's all right. Like, but uh, you, you still got some uh, fire. You know, sure, sure. You, you could still throw down. <laughs> Especially if you're talking about your gear or your son's diapers. Right? You, right? you get kind of angsty there. <laughs> so anyway, uh, get old Papa Bear on them. There How's you that? go. That's okay. It. So anyway, it's a really cool bag, really lightweight. Um, unfortunately, it's been discontinued. But um, if you can find it on the on the market, I mean... They're fairly affordable. Um, I love this bag. I mean, it's really comfy, really light, and it does double duty. So I just can focus on, you know, traveling with my son, which is cool. Um, I have a new uh, watch project. I'm building a, a re refurbishing and bringing back to life an old SKX-031, which uh, is commonly referred to in the forums as the poor man's Submariner. Because it looks like the Rolex Submariner, but it was Seiko's take on it. Uh, it only had about a 10-year lifespan, um, it, which in watch years isn't that long, really. Especially for Seiko, because, I mean, the SKX 007 is like 30 years old or 20 years old. Sure. Uh, so anyway, I really have wanted one of these for a while, but I've never found the right example. Or a lot of guys take them and mod them to the point where they're totally frankened. And I really wanted to have one that's a little bit more what Seiko had in mind for it. So uh, I'm currently in the process. I, I got a case. Um, I mentioned on a previous episode from Nick from Orion Watches. Uh, he sold me one. And I finally got the dial in hands, and they are original, uh, out of a, uh, uh, a dealer out of uh, Spain. All right. Yep. Uh, very vintage. Uh, it, it, it was well-loved in its previous housing. Let's just put it that way. Um, I've recrystalled, regasketed, I've polished the case, and now I'm just waiting for a crown so I can set the um, the movement. So that's that's my current project. Been purging watches. Um, yes. Might be there might be two more leaving my collection. So this you know, couple in or one in, couple out. Sure. Uh, camera nerding. I uh, man, I've I per you've seen my lens cabinet. You can actually see through my lens cabinet okay. now as opposed to it being stacked. Uh, Rokinon 2428, which is their new AF model for the Sony full frame uh, bodies, which also works great on their crop sensor. I'm thinking the AF stands for autofocus. Yes, it okay, does. Okay, I just want to make sure, clarify on yep. that one, because that has a different connotation now. Yes, <laughs> yes, it does. Thank you for that. <laughs> Indeed. So, anyway, the new Rokinon 2428, uh, it's only a couple months old. Um, I decided to get one because I like the, the, the more, very much more expensive Zeiss 24, um, but I just wanted something that's a little, uh, a little easier on the wallet. Uh, it, good lens. If you're looking for something that's in that vein, I think I paid uh, 400 bucks for it. Um, for 100 USD. And the thing about this lens that's a little bit quirky I wanted to throw out, I mentioned it on my Patreon blog, and I wanted to mention it here. If you have an older body that doesn't have the new Sony um, in-body stabilization and their new 4D focusing, this lens, if you're a video a vlogger or a videographer, is not for you because the autofocus is constantly engaged so you'll hear it in camera um and i'm pretty sure you could probably even hear it if you have a shoe mounted mic it's pretty loud um but for stills it's it's pretty fast fo focusing I, i'm really having a lot of fun with it so um that's the rokinon 2428 the other thing i want to throw out is the lensmate thumbs up so lensmate uh i think they're based out of seattle and they make some really skookum camera accessories, like as have like a little thumb grip that you can put through the the, sh the hot shoe, the plate on top. And I've I've used Lensmates before, but um, on the new style of body for for Sony, 
it extends to the point where it actually hinders where you can get the second knob, like on my A6000. Well, they made a new version a couple years back that actually folds over. So you can basically have your thumb grip, flip it up, grab both of your knobs, th- throw it back and still have the use of the grip. They're fairly pricey. I think they're like 60 bucks, but, uh, and it's just a, a piece of, um, I think it's milled aluminum or, uh, might be steel. I can't remember, uh, really well built, super well built. Um, and I, I'm really in, enjoying having that on my camera because it just gives me a little extra, little extra thing. Workflow augmentation. Yeah. Enhancement. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then other than that, I have a new mug. You have a new mug. So, yeah. So. Is this it? That's it. Yeah. All so, right. um, so here's the thing. Like I, I, I had a Yeti and I lost it. And I, I, the, my Yeti mug was great, except the one thing I didn't like about it is it didn't have a locking lid. It just had the, you know, the little lip rest one. Um, so anyway, started looking for a new one and, uh, this is a company that we mentioned a while back called Ello. Hello. There was a water bottle that I once had that had an untimely demise as well. <laughs> as you can tell <laughs> in my drinking paraphernalia is not a buy it for life kind of thing because it's more like I have it for the life that it's going to live. And I, I, I kind of like my camera gear. I put it through its paces. So this is an Ello and I think they just call this the camper and their their slogan for this one is it's not your grandfather's uh travel or camping mug because it's enamelware so it looks like the the old school like um, percolator it's got yes. the blue and the white speckles uh-huh. it's an 18 ounce so if you're familiar with like a camping two cup it's that two cup blue with the white speckles and it's about two of those two cups stacked on top of each Perfect. other it's got a cork handle so kind of more of a natural material uh, on the side and then it's got a what I love locking lid. And it actually does lock. Like I, I, uh, it's got a gasket in it, and I've thrown this in my my lunch sack, and it's flipped upside down with coffee in it, and it hasn't spilled. Excellent. Um, so I think this was maybe like twelve or thirteen bucks. How did you acquire the LO from uh, their website or from another? Area? No, from the other. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. You know where we're talking about. Um, but uh, anyway, it's it's just it's nice. The only gripe I have about this is uh, in vehicles, some restrictions may apply with regards to your cup holder. Ah. So I got this and it fits in my wife's car like a glove, barely fits in my truck, mm. um, which is kind of a shame. It's a little bit because it's it, it keeps the same um, diameter as a two cup. So uh, if you've got one of those around your house, test it in your vehicle before you decide to go down this the, this cup because like I said, in my truck, it, it pretty much doesn't fit, which is kind of a shame. So All right. So yeah. So as we're wrapping up, uh, we want to uh, continue the announcement that of a- of AJ's project. <laughs> uh, talk to us about the latest with the Analog Explorer, please. Yes. So at the time of this recording, Patreon patrons have already gotten a very uh, special link to jump the line. I have uh, the Skookum Editions, which is the first limited run um, before the regular edition comes out later in December. Of the Analog Explorer, which is a 20 page all original uh, magazine that I created um, that combines travel and photography and a little bit of watches, sub watch fam. And so for the, the initial the initial public offering, as I jokingly call this, um, I basically did a very limited run. And what I'm doing is I'm signing and numbering them just like a limited print. And once they're they're sold out, they're sold out. And then the regular edition will come out right afterwards. But also, I'm doing a local meetup, uh, December second, and time and venue, kind of like uh, Red Bar, will be a TBD. Dis- will be disclosed to those people who um, sign up f- uh, and, and purchase the Analog Explorer for local pickup. Um, but it'll be on December second, and here in Bellingham, where basically you'll come and you can meet me, and I'll sign it and number it, and uh, maybe we can sit down, and have a cup of coffee, and you can ask me questions about it and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I wanted to kind of, again, it's the analog theme. I didn't just want to do a, a blog or do uh, an Instagram story or anything. I wanted it to be kind of getting us more in kin with what we are as humans and kind of like what we saw with Red Bar. Like, you can see so many photos of, of watches, but you don't know what it's like until you actually have it on wrist and talk to the person who owns it and stuff. And kind of with my photography, I wanted to go that route again. So, anyway, um some of them have already pre-sold because my, my patrons have already signed up uh, uh, in advance. So wh- uh, whatever's left will be publicly offered on Sunday. So by the time you hear this recording, if you go to theanalogexplorer.com or ajbarsay.com, uh, my store will be up and um, snatch it before they sell out because those first ones, like I said, will be signed and numbered 
and the other ones you'll be just uh, purchasing directly from um, a direct publishing uh, company that I've, uh, I'm working with for the regular edition. And to summarize, line forms behind <laughs> me, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Get them while they're hot. Yeah. So that wraps it up for this 101th edition. What? That's a good one. Yeah. Let's try that again. <laughs> that wraps it up for this 101st edition of the Bellingham Podcast. Thank you again so much for listening to us, rating us, reviewing us, wherever you like to listen to your podcast. Or if you're in the Bellingham area, you might be listening to us on KMRE 102.3 FM. Low power. Community radio here in the heart of the city by the Salish Sea. And on that note... Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I'm AJ Barsay. And I'm Chris Powell. Thank you once again for joining us here on the Bellingham Podcast. Okay, I'm going to go home and go uh, have my next meeting with NyQuil. Props for not coughing during the recording. That was good stuff. I'm a professional.